Hi, Misha here, and you read the title, so yeah, let's just go on and preview the uh, Hellion. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of the name. I've said that lots of posts, and I believe others kind of feel me on that. You know, Springfield, uh, they're, they're trying to make a little series here with Hellcat and all that. I don't know. Anyway, the military name of VH. S standing for essentially multi purpose Croatian machine gun, much cooler. And of course, this is based on the VHS 2, the current version for about the last decade. So, comes in pretty standard, but perfectly fine tactical case. Guns inside. Interestingly, it's not plastic wrapped, at least mine wasn't. Here we just have a simple cable lock, and here we have your typical Magpul mag and sealed bag. Nothing fancy, but I would rather have a case like this that's actually usable instead of uh, something like a cardboard box that I'm just going to either damage or lose. I just don't care about cardboard. And you already know all the features and stuff. There's been uh, videos on this already, but what the hey. Keep in mind, this isn't something sponsored by Springfield or anything like that. I actually picked this up using Patreon assistance and thought we would have some fun and talk about a little bit of the mil military history and how close this is to the military gun and its uh, inspirations. Pretty darn straightforward. And before we get going too deep in, just wanted to say, greatly appreciate you watching. If you could, please do like, share, and subscribe. You know, YouTube's shenanigans. And if you'd like to help support the channel so I can be in front of the camera more than here, eh, you might check out the link to the Patreon page. It's in the description. With that, yeah, let's get back and talk about this uh, new bull puppy. The VHS has two pretty clear inspirations. One, the French FAMAS, I can't show you. But this inspiration is very apparent, not just in the overall bullpup layout, but especially in the v original VHS. We'll call it the VHS-1, just for clarity. The other is the Heckler & Koch G36 here, which makes sense because Croatia actually purchased Oh, anywhere from 700 to 1,000 of these in the, uh, in the 90s and uh, used it. They also purchased some of the HK-416s for Special Forces. But the uh, VHS is manufactured by HS Products. And they were around since the independence of Croatia, 1991-1992, at that time known as IM Metal. And they produce the interesting, if not stellarly great, PHP pistol, which evolved into the HS-95, which evolved into the HS-2000, which is not only Croatia's primary issue service sidearm today and has been for 20 years, it's also, of course, as I'm sure you know, the Springfield XD and XDM. The thing about IM Metal, later renamed to HS Product, they were willing to learn. In the beginning, they knew very little, but they had that will, that desire, and that nationalism. They actually, from the very beginning, really wanted to do a bullpup for whatever reason. And at first, they tried just turning an AK into a bullpup. Croatia had inherited about 88,000 Zastava M70s, different types, B1, AB2, from the former Yugoslavia, so they had plenty of AKs on hand. So they considered doing an AK conversion or taking the AK's long stroke gas piston and turning it into a bullpup. And that didn't work for several reasons, partly production quality, partly just AK bullpups are pretty iffy to begin with. Then they kind of turned their gaze to the French FAMAS. And this is why the original VHSs look a lot like a French FAMAS, including even having the lever-delayed blowback system. 
Now, they were always chambering these for 5.56, but there were multiple prototypes in 96, 99, 2003, 2004. And um, even when they first showed off what would become the VHS to the defense minister in 2005, it was far from done. Well, the lever delay, while they made some prototypes with it, didn't really go anywhere. This design started off in 2003 and implemented a short stroke gas piston, not unlike what they would have found in the G36 or the HK416. And that's the one that really ended up being a success. They showed it off to the defense minister. There was interest. They continued to refine the design actually quite a bit. And in 2007, they felt comfortable enough to show the first version at a Croatian Arms Expo. And later that year in November, the Croatian government signed a uh, contract for 40 or 50 pre-production test guns that they would send in the hands of Croatian soldiers who were serving in Afghanistan and really get some feedback and uh, field you know, experience with it. So that is exactly what they did. About a year later, using some of the soldier feedback, HS unveiled the final version, right around Thanksgiving as it happens. And this would enter into Croatian uh, torture testing. They had about 50 guns again of this refined version. And they did all kinds of regular testing, including 50,000 rounds, endurance tests, and all that stuff. And then in May of the next year, it was announced that it had passed the testing and trials. And um, the first order was placed. It would uh, initially be 1,000, later up to 2,000 and beyond, and the deliveries would begin by in 2012, there were over 3,000 in Croatian military armed forces service, and this would grow all the way up to 7,000 plus for the original VHS-1. And so that was a significant portion of the Croatian military. For what it's worth, the army is the largest member of their armed forces, and they have about 12,500 people in active service plus reserve. And the whole armed forces is only about 14,500 active with another 20, 21,000 reserve. So having 7,000-ish, hey, not, not too bad. There was a lot of interest. Uh, France looked at it for trials. Iraq actually looked at it, and we'll talk more about them later. And the USA even acquired a few hundred. Uh, 500 were sent to the USA kind of coming from Croatian military stocks because of the VHS ones and we were already progressing on to the two here It should be noted. There were two principal versions the VHS D and the VHS K the D Had a 19.7 inch barrel so very much like our G36 here and The K had a barrel slightly shorter than that of a Kalashnikov so about 16.1 inches long and the D, of course, could accept a bayonet, had a kind of FAMAS-style grenade launcher and uh, carry handle inspired by the G36, a selector inspired by the FAMAS, so on and so forth. The D, you would think, would be the standard issue, but when they really got into using them, they found out the K was, frankly, more useful. So the D kind of became more of a DMR, type gun, as it happens. And of course, with military service, there would be praise and complaints, and that's how we end up with our uh, version 2 here. Flipping these over, you can see the G36 with the stock folded. Of course, this is the full-size version with a 19-inch barrel, and this is the essentially K version with a 16-inch barrel. Still quite compact. It's a bullpup. One of the earliest changes made was back in 2007-2008. When HS first introduced this gun, it had a standard AR-15 Magwell adapter. And while Croatia had some M16s, AR-15s, M4s, they, they had a lot of G36s and mags. 
So one of their earliest requests was to let it take those mags. So that's what they did. So the, the final version introduced at the end of 08 took essentially Croatian copies of G36 mags. And they even offered them with and without the studs for coupling. Now, the US version here, the civilian version, rightly comes with an AR-15 magwell. Now, it is modular, so if someone were able to acquire the block to take G36 mags, it'd pop right in, kind of reminded of the Bryn 805. But in the interim, I thought this uh, HK translucent greenish mag would kind of simulate that. And both versions have been made and are still made today, so it's not like all of the militaries are one or the other. It's a modular system. So that was an early change. Now, and originally, too, it had a 1.5 reflex sight as part of the carry handle. It was taller. It was a lot like the G36 here. Um, it's uh, kind of what they consider to be the export sight, so it would have been very similar to that. In 2012, they worked on the refined version. And in 2013, they first showed off the VHS-2. And it, too, is produced in the D&K. Now, is it VHS-2D or VHS-2K? Or is it VHS-K2 and VHS-D2? I think it's both. Because even looking on HX, A, HSS Products' site, on the same web page, literally the same page, they use both names. <laughs> so whichever way you like to write it is correct. Go them. It doesn't really matter. The point is made. They're still offering it with a 16 or nearly 20 inch barrel. So, yeah. But they made a lot of updates and improvements. One of the biggest ones, they got away from the FAMAS style selector inside the trigger guard going to this style here. I'll admit this isn't my favorite selector and a lot of people aren't super stoked about it, but compared to what we had before, it is better. They went to a new muzzle device. As far as I understand it, I could be wrong on this, probably am. The originals had more of a birdcage. At least for the carbines, they've started to introduce this four-prong flash rider, which for a shorter barrel makes perfect sense. They also redesigned the handguard. Now this is the US handguard with M-Lock. The military version is like this, but it has three Picatinny rail sections attached. What's interesting is the new VHS-2 handguard is actually reverse compatible with the VHS-1. And the uh, rail up here is different. They introduced this new kind of lower rail with these flip up adjustable still iron sights. This is very similar to some of the HK rails offered for the G36, including the style of sights, really. But, yeah. It's metal. Of course, it's bolted to the polymer chassis, and it does protect the very G36 style handle. The only bad thing with this one, you can do this where you flick it. This one you can't. It's a little stouter. I guess it makes up for it by the fact that it's non-reciprocating, whereas the G36 is directly connected to the bolt carrier, and it does reciprocate, so I guess we'll let them do that. They also changed up the ejection port system. We have a dust cover door here, and we have a brass deflector, but that is mirrored on the left side and it's quite reversible for left-handed shooters so they made it much more ambidextrously friendly including giving brass deflectors in case you have to fire it off hand good improvement there it's worth pointing out that the creation version as far as i know the pistol grip is just part of this lower section on the american version it takes ar-15 pistol grips and comes with a looks like a gunfighter 
th that's a minor thing I can, you know, understand why they did. Moving back, we have a removable cheek rest. Now they can work with optics. And of course, we have this quite interesting adjustable stock. I'm going to set you down for just a second. When I first heard about these, that was the most interesting feature, an adjustable stock on a bullpup. And it's kind of spring-loaded, too. It's interesting. I haven't counted positions, but according to HS's website, it has five, so I'll take them at their word. The idea is you can kind of collapse it in for use with body armor. That's just, that's really interesting for a bullpup to me. It also pushes the ejection port forward, for better or worse. Kind of depends on your perspective. Everything else is pretty HK style with these push pins for takedown. And we have a, I would say a typical bullpup trigger, but not really. While it may be not the bestest in the world, it's a heap load better than, say, the original Tavor or the F2000 or most AUG triggers, I've felt, at least out of the box. We also have slots here and here and here for a QD sling swivel. And another thing I find interesting, we actually have kind of an HK style or AK style eyelet here too. I have a feeling they considered using these with M92 slings. And finally, we have an adjustable gas regulator. You press in and rotate. Good system, be easy enough to do if still hot. Our controls are pretty straightforward. We have the bolt release back here, mag release here in the usual places. Kind of old hat now, although at one time, bullpups were super exotic in America. I think we've been spoiled a little bit. Let's throw a sling on it using the QD. And just kind of grab the first one that had a QD on it around here. But of course, anything will fit. And again, we have these eyelets if you want to go that route. And I grab the first free red dot to hand just to kind of show. Thought that would uh, do well with the, yeah, it's about the same height as the irons here. I actually do like this rail system. It um, feels quality. I like the spring-loaded nature. If it was the long barrel version, I would think a two and a half to four power would be good. But for the short barrel, I don't know, a little reflex sight seems like a good idea to me. Pretty standard there. There's enough room to grasp it. I also kind of like how the receiver dips down here. That lets you really grab it with your hand around there, using as kind of a guard. And there's not much barrel sticking out, so it's mostly protected, but it also is, it's got a lot of air space in there for cooling. Normally I would object when they change things for the American market, like CZ and IWI have started to do, but, you know, I kind of like this smooth, rounded handguard. I wouldn't use the rails anyway, and since it does have M-lock, you could attach rails to simulate that. Again, the Magwell, that doesn't bug me. If I can find an original one, I'll probably pick it up if it's not crazy money. I also wouldn't mind picking up at a, an M92 sling to put on here just for fun, because I think that would be pretty appropriate. Is that As far as the pistol grip, if you could, let me know in the comments which AR grip out there looks most like what's on the Croatian military's VHS 2K, please, or VHS K2 if you prefer. I wanted to talk about the charging handle here. It's quite interesting when it's, you know, backwards, it's fixed in the side position. Now on the HK, you can pull it out and lock it there manually, but this does it automatically. And then when it goes forward, it puts itself forward. And as you see, it's not connected to the bolt here. Another interesting thing, it does in fact have a forward assist, which I was interested about. 
if you have it lined up at the bolt, there's a button here. It's a little hard to get your finger on, I'll be honest. But um, you can press this in right here, and that grabs onto the bolt. Kind of reminds me of the Steyr Aug port assist, where you kind of connect it to the rod. But it works. Of course, here we have open cover, and then to release, we have it. Quite an interesting whole system here, the way they've got it done. I don't know. I like the bolt release. I do on the mag. There we go. It's actually not as hard as some. And again, the uh, mag release is back here behind the mag. Pretty standard locale. You know, it doesn't press very far. It's quite interesting. It's just a small squeeze. I don't know. Kind of neat. Standard AR style. And that's kind of the range of features, folks. I know some have said it's heavy. It doesn't strike me as heavy. I mean, it's not super light, but I don't know, seven-ish pounds, maybe a little more. Not, not, not egregious to my mind. I do like how it has this kind of deflector on top, too, to keep gas from kicking back at you. It's got a rubber butt plate. Again, the, the adjustable's quite interesting. Yeah, same stud on this side. This is definitely my first quote-unquote look. The other thing is, yeah, the safety is a little... The trigger, though, is actually, in my opinion, quite acceptable for being a bullpup, especially a military-grade one. The only other bullpup we've had with something kind of similar right out of the box is the Tavor X95. And this is still a gun I really enjoy shooting. Ironically, the last time we went out just a couple of weeks ago, I took the original Tavor SAR, just hadn't shot it in a while. And then, of course, this came in right after we went to the range, so this will have to wait till next time. But uh, I think this is a good comparison. They're both about the most modern bullpups we have. Don't get me wrong, I love my Steyr AUG A3. In fact, I was kind of considering keeping a new one, one of the uh, NATO mag ones, just for funsies, before these came around, since the money's about the same. But, uh, you know, the AUG is an older design. Both this and the Tavor are quite new. And they're both kind of second generation, you know, VHS-2, Tavor X95 being the second major generation in its own uh, family here. It has to be said, the X95 here is lighter. That is keeping in mind that I have the short rail and short handguard on mine, but still retain the original barrel. I didn't feel like SBRing it, so good enough. It is a shorter gun, even with the stock fully collapsed in on the VHS, the Tavor a little bit shorter and of course it has a very standard safety and AR mag release and also a ambidextrous pretty much everything although it has to be said converting to left hand ejection is a lot simpler with the VHS 2 with the Tavor you have to get an appropriate bolt head but they are very similar in feature and even in cost and even in generation. Both of these are, you know, roughly speaking, 2013, 2014 generation guns. And so I don't think one really inspired the other because their, their progenitors both came out around the same time too. Yeah, so I just parallel designs. It's interesting to see bullpups still alive. And it's interesting that Croatia was such a small military and a relatively small population overall did its own thing. It didn't just license produce a, the AR-15 or the Kalashnikov or even the Tavor or the AUG. It made its own gun and this is its own thing. Uh, it's, it has a lot to do with the FAMAS but it also has a lot to do with the FAMAS mixed with the G36. It's quite intriguing. They definitely, I'll tell you what it is, it reminds me in spirit, not in practice of course, but in spirit 
the Korean Daewoo K2, where they kind of picked and chose the best features of different guns around them and came up with something that you can recognize little components from other guns in, but it's still wholly unique. And the manufacturing quality on this, I mean, we haven't taken it out shooting yet, and that'll be the big video, but um, seems nice first impressions. Actually, quite nice. The bolt's smooth, perfectly good trigger. It's got a long pull, but the brake is, uh, yeah, not bad at all. Now, like I said, the Corrosion military, just to kind of pick that story back up, was interested in these. They would initially order 300 to supplement their VHS ones. And uh, by 2015, they had kind of gone whole hog with these, ordering a couple of thousand VHS twos and actually cycling their VHS ones into second line and eventually training in reserve roles. Instead, they signed a contract for 20,000 VHS twos. So that's more than enough to equip the active military and have some left over for reserve and replacement. Plus, they've got at least 7,000 VHS ones they can pull out of storage if needed. It's not like the VHS one was inherently defective, it just had a few ergonomic quirks like the safety. So it's still usable in case of, you know, emergency. In 2014, another party that really became interested was that of Iraq. And they originally received a handful of VHS ones for testing and evaluation. And I guess they really liked them because they signed a contract with, for, with the HS in 2015 for 10,000 VHS twos. And it's interesting, if you look in the Middle East, that you see them with VHS Ds, VHS Ks, VHS 2Ks, and VHS 2Ds. So they seem like they kind of took whatever HS could provide them. They initially outfitted them with their special forces, fighting ISIS, ISIL, helping defend Fallujah. And uh, later they would start equipping them with elite police forces and counterterrorism groups and, and the like. As Wikipedia points out, that actually is where the VHS became quite common and well-known because it would appear on the evening news in the hands of Iraqis, mostly. But Croatians would also take their VHSs into Iraq as they were helping operations there. So not only did the first batches see use in Afghanistan, they saw real-world testing and improvement in Iraq, too. And they've kind of moved around ever since then. How many did Iraq end up buying? No one knows. Um, in 2018, Croatian News reported they had bought 30,000. But other sources claim as many as 100,000, which possible, but I find difficult to believe. After all, HS is not a huge company, and it's a multi-year contract to supply 20,000 to the Croatian military. But anything's possible. Maybe they have. But the point is, Iraq really has seemed taken with this gun. Talking about triggers again, just because, here's the Tavor. This is an unmolested Tavor. Not much take up. And then, quite nice. I've always been happy with the X95 trigger. The Hellion has a lot more take up, although that could be said to be intentional for a military gun for safety. And then it has a sharper break and a little bit heavier, but it's not spongy or gritty or unpredictable. It's just a very clean break. So this is more like a glass rod, whereas this is more of a nice AR trigger. So yeah, I'd say the X95 has a slightly nicer trigger but um, this one's not bad for being a bullpup. Bullpups have come a long way in 20 years, trust me. A long way. Also has to be said, this has a port cover door. This one doesn't. This one has more of a deflector going on. I still think the adjustable stock is cool. Both of them have modular grips, although this one takes standard AR 
grips. Now as far as the charging handle, I do think the VHS is a little better. I've always kind of enjoyed the HK style. It's very much out of the way. Neither reciprocate, but the Tavors does stick out a bit. Now it's a little minimized on the X95, that's okay. But it's not accessible. You have to switch it over to the right side if you need that side. This one is ready, ready to go either side. It does require the rail to be a bit higher, more kind of AR style, whereas this can be right down. So it does have that disadvantage, but I think the ease of access of this and it not being in the way to get hooked on things or poke you in the side is, is kind of cool. Yeah, also keep in mind that if we're talking military, the X95 is, was originally a 13 inch barrel. Now it's a 15 for the X95 II. Although there is the X95L, which is 16.5, but I digress. With the VHS, we do have a longer barrel, a standard, either 16 or 19.7 inches. So with the 223 5.56 round, yeah. On the other hand, this is not this is not a uh, chrome line bore, as best I understand. It's a nitride, whereas the Devores are still chrome lined. That's a personal preference thing. I still prefer chrome lined, but then again, that could just be tradition. No reason to get into that uh, debate here and now. Hard to say because I haven't shot this yet and it's new. Anytime something's new, it's interesting, but it is great that we're getting this. I I've said quite a few times, any military foreign gun out there We've been super lucky. We've received a semi-automatic version of sooner or later. And considering this gun really only went into service around 2015, at least in any number, you know, we're not too far behind the curve. Six, seven years. It seems like Springfield's assembling these in the U.S. I'm not sure which parts are U.S. and Croatian right now. I'm sure that's something I will learn in time. And, uh, yeah, hoping it's a good shooter. I guess we will hopefully find out sooner than later but um, yeah no super criticisms at this point and I think it's great that Croatia is making its own gun not just under license but its own design keep in mind we're at a time now when a lot of European nations no longer have firearms manufacturing capabilities so for a tiny nation like Croatia to do it to my mind that says a lot I should point out that, yeah, the safety here versus on the Devore. I mean, that's pretty obvious that the Devore has got the better safety. As far as the mag release, I don't really have a problem with either one. I think it's a training thing. I like how short of a pull this is, but I'm sure a lot of people would prefer the Devores, but I think that's more personal taste. Well, that's kind of my first impression, folks. Interesting history. Well made gun, neat features with the butt stock and cheek piece that can be removable. I really think the uh, Picatinny rail with the sights is a good good thing. I don't mind the change in the handguard and the pistol grip in the magazine for the US market. That's not egregious. Although if I can get a pistol grip to match the Croatian militaries, that'd be great. And if I can get the original G36 style magwell, I'd probably do that if it was not crazy money. This also disassembles quite easily, but it's just me here alone working single-handed, so we can do that another time. But anyway, I appreciate you hanging out with me middle of this week. I actually was planning to do a different video for today, but recorded it all, spent a couple hours doing that, went back to process it, and the audio was trash, so kind of a last minute thing so that's what we're doing this today if it seems like i'm a little rushed uh, apologies for that <laughs> anywho as i said at the beginning if you'd like to help support the channel please check out the link to the patreon page and as always if you could like share and subscribe and as always please do feel free to comment below comments are fun this is misha and we'll get this out to the range very soon, next time.